Don't you just love it when a bunch of giant, overpowered monsters wreak total havoc while fighting each other? Yeah, me too. Keeping that in mind today, the TV region presents the top 25 giant monster fights in the movies. Before I kick off this entry, let me just say that I find the skull crawler design absolutely terrifying. The placements of their limbs and tails are so unnatural and eerie, their eyes are also made to seem lifeless, almost like the killer whales. So yeah, when the big daddy of these monsters gets his butt handed to him by King Kong, it's definitely an achievement to celebrate for me. What started off as a losing cause eventually turned into total humiliation as Kong made sure to rip everything out of the creepy beast in no time. It also got me thinking. The reason why Kong does his best to save other species is because of his parents. He must have faced severe trauma during his childhood, especially when he witnessed his own parents getting killed by the skull crawlers. So now he just instinctively saves others so that their loved ones don't have to go through the same experience. That's some Giga Chad behavior right there. isn't about us. Seeing a couple of apex predators in a no-holds-barred contest is a pretty pleasant sight, which I know sounds ironic. In the case of the T-Rex versus the Gigantosaurus, we got some respite after a somewhat confusing conclusion to the Jurassic World trilogy. Yep, I'm going to be honest here. Technically speaking, the Gigantosaurus is the larger beast, so she should be the victor based on stats. Also, the fact that Rexy's been around since 1993 only adds to her disadvantage. Luckily, the Therizinosaurus was around to give her a helping hand, or should I say, a helping claw. I'll admit that the final showdown was a bit anticlimactic, but even then, it's good enough to land an entry here. Let's be honest though, it would have been perfect if the Spinosaurus from Jurassic Park 3 showed up instead of the Therizinosaurus. Man, that is a hard name to pronounce, isn't it? Also, I really liked how politely and patiently the T-Rex and Gigantosaurus waited for the cast to quickly escape before they started throwing down. Looks like dinosaurs have better manners than humans, right? If the kaijus from Pacific Rim weren't bad enough as they were now, there's this freaking mega kaiju which looks like something straight from the depths of the underworld. Pacific Rim Uprising wasn't as much of a success as its predecessor, but you can't really expect much if your main cast doesn't return. The final battle between the Mega Kaiju and the Jaegers was an appropriate piece of entertainment for the film's climax. Luckily, it all came to an end with the final attack from Gypsy Avenger. Yeah, isn't it beautiful to watch all the laws of physics being broken in one scene? Like, I'm glad they stopped the Mega Kaiju, but there's no way those pilots would have survived a drop from low orbit with the cockpit blown open. Son of a bitch! 
film version of Rampage was first announced, I was a little skeptical because we all know how most video game adaptations turn out. Yeah, I'm looking at you Assassin's Creed. However, I was pleasantly surprised by the way things turned out for this one, and a huge chunk of that credit goes to the final battle. You know, George sounds fine for a gorilla, and even Ralph is appropriate for a wolf, but who in their right mind would name a freaking crocodile Lizzie? Also, have you even seen this creature? It ain't a crocodile, it's a goddamn dinosaur! I think it was a wise move to get rid of the flying wolf in the beginning because, let's face it, it was at best just a side character. Lizzie was a menace, and it showed in how much effort it took for The Rock and George to defeat her. The look on Dwayne Johnson's face when he ran out of ammo was priceless, but hey, all's well that ends well I guess, yeah? If there's one thing that the Hobbit trilogy has taught us, it's that you should never plan your treks when the stone giants are having a quarrel. Watching these two monsters fight each other against the backdrop of a dark, gloomy night was a treat to the eyes, even though you couldn't see that much. Whether it was a punch or a headbutt, these creatures looked absolutely terrifying and their strength validated their reputation. It was hilarious to see the team struggling because they were literally on one of the giants, but other than that, it looks like something out of a horror movie. I do also want to give credit to the sound team here because the background score totally enhanced the overall vibe of the scene. Also, huge props to Thorin for being the most animated guy out there. His facial expressions and screams definitely stood out fighting each other. Skull Island really is a human's worst nightmare. For monsters though, it's basically the perfect home as long as you're on top of the food chain. To be honest, this isn't as much of a fight as it is a meal being served. A beast like King Kong would obviously have a huge appetite, so for him to eat a giant squid isn't much of a big deal. However, in this case, Bro just wanted some water and some rest to treat his injuries. That giant squid thought it could be brave. But Kong must have just been like, hey, I don't mind some seafood and took the opportunity. The appearance of the squid was definitely sudden and creepy, but it didn't take the giant gorilla much time to turn his attacker into a midday meal. <laughs> I wonder what that squid would have tasted like. It could have made for some nice calamari if Kong knew how to cook. Well, we couldn't get her in Dominion, but at least we've got some footage of the Spinosaurus from Jurassic Park 3. Say what you will about this movie, but I still find it better than the Jurassic World films, apart from the first one maybe, I suppose. Watching her fight against that teenage T-Rex was a matchup everyone had been hoping for. I was a little disappointed that it lasted for only 30 seconds, but I guess the T-Rex was still too young for battle. There's no way a fight between these two species would last the same length as your average TikTok video. Reservations aside, I personally enjoyed the fact that there was no music or background score for this fight. I don't know, I guess it made the encounter feel a bit more genuine, especially by allowing us to hear the dinosaurs and their vocalisation so clearly. Unlike Godzilla, who basically just shows up whenever there's danger and smashes the threat before going back underwater. It's cool and all, but it always helps to build a connection with the characters, even if they're overpowered monsters. Alright, Marco. 
Get ready, this is for real! Elbow rocket! Now! Kaiju start to become a serious threat once they're category 4 or above. With Leatherback fulfilling this requirement, he made sure his fight against Gypsy Danger was one to be remembered. It feels weird to say this, but the scene felt realistic with the way Charlie's Jaeger was landing those punches on the Kaiju. You could almost feel the impact of the blows, especially because of how much both the fighters must have weighed. It wasn't an easy win for our heroes, but at least it felt well earned. This was also during the time big budget CGI was still good, so the visuals were on point. Hearing Charlie shout, empty the clip with such a strong sense of panic totally enhanced the tension during that final onslaught. Guillermo del Toro knew what he was doing with this movie, and even though he won't admit it, I like the fact that there's a lot of inspiration from Neon Genesis Evangelion. It's easy to forget iconic scenes from the MCU because there's just so many of them. The fight between the Hulk and the Hulkbuster though isn't one of them. Before you raise any eyebrows, the Hulk is most definitely qualified to be a monster because she sure ain't human and I don't see any AI on him either. This was an unexpected sequence in a film like Age of Ultron, but it did add a lot of value and attracted a lot of viewers too. I mean, you're being given the chance to watch two of the most unstoppable forces in the MCU battle each other, Hulk's brutal strength and Iron Man's impeccable intelligence. The fight in itself was a spectacle with neither party backing down regardless of the damage they were taking. I'm sorry. And at the end of it, Tony had to flex his billionaire status and destroy a building after burying it, but that's just a small price to pay for saving innocent lives. <laughs> you know what? I'm just gonna say it. The MCU is never gonna reach the same level of success as it did with Iron Man. How quickly can we buy this building? Rexy's a pretty awesome dinosaur. She looks cool, she's powerful AF, and she also happens to like humans. There's no other explanation for her actions in the Jurassic franchise. She did it in the first Jurassic Park movie, she did it in the earlier entry from Dominion, and here she is doing it again in Fallen Kingdom. The Carnotosaurus is a pretty deadly monster in its own right, but it's obviously no match for a T-Rex, so it makes sense for Rexy to emerge victorious in a rather short-lived encounter. All it takes is one bite for her to do the trick, which isn't much, but hey, she ended up saving Owen, and that's what matters. Also, I think it was more of a favour so that he'd owe her one. It didn't take long for Rexy to redeem that generosity in the finale of the film, although it was actually Macy who set the dinosaurs loose. I can open the gates from here. Claire, be careful. Legendary warriors, the powers that created us now want us all extinguished. We must join forces, or else forever be their slaves. So today you stand with us, or you stand against me.
Optimus Prime is a pretty badass Autobot, and I don't just mean it because he's overpowered and gives motivational speeches. He's also an amazing leader who can walk the talk whenever necessary. The dude literally owns the leader of the Dinobots within two business minutes and goes on to become his master without any resistance whatsoever. Also, the way Optimus' arm transforms into the Knight's Gauntlet when grabbing the sword is amazing. It's like he's harnessing some secret power within him. I know the Transformers films don't necessarily follow intricate plots, but Grimlock's design was on point, especially the transformation. On top of that, to see the Autobots join hands with the Dinobots to defeat the Decepticon invasion gave me a feeling of sheer exuberance. It was such a one-sided affair that Grimlock and his gang almost felt like a cheat code. Here's another one where Godzilla's given a run for his money. I can't help it though, this scene is pretty badass. The standoff between Godzilla and King Ghidorah looked as if it was straight out of a Clint Eastwood western, and I love the fact that the King of the Monsters stomped the ground to let his opponent know he wasn't phased by the difference in their sizes. I swear, if Godzilla's atomic breath landed one shot, this battle could have easily gone the other way. Instead, we got to see a three-headed dragon turbocharge itself with some extra electricity and activate Thor mode. Still, it's not like Godzilla lost the fight, it just had to end abruptly because of human interference. Oh, don't you just hate it when that happens? We finally got our favourite kaiju taking the W against the two Mutos in the first film of the MonsterVerse. It was a bit annoying for him, because he had that annoying male interrupting him whenever he tried to finish off the female Muto. I mean, come on bro, just fight him like a man. Don't just fly around the fog like a coward. I swear that dude was like the Pete Davidson of monsters. Luckily, all Godzilla needed was for one of his hits to connect, and his tail eventually did the trick. As for the final face-off against the female Muto, you've got to give props to the visual team for making the atomic breath look so vibrant. The way he charges up for it is pretty badass as well, almost like the monster version of Goku's Kamehameha. This was the Royal Rumble of the MCU and it happened in its very first year. We all know how strong Hulk is, but Abomination showed himself to be a higher level than the Angry Green Giant. Their final battle in 2008, the Incredible Hulk was revolutionary for its time and the CGI looked so freaking good. I swear it makes all the modern stuff look like it was made by a 10th grade student, you know. The action was non-stop all the way through to the end and as expected, Hulk reigns supreme. gonna lie though, I was a bit worried considering how Abomination was owning Bruce Banner with his moves, but at least our boy got the final laugh, eh? That Hulk smash moment sent chills down my spine when I first saw it in the theatres. The beauty of overwhelming strength, unfiltered rage, and sheer brutality is what made this Hulk better than what we have today. I'm sorry Mark, that's just the way it is. Any last words? Hulk! Smash!
The Indominus Rex was a welcome addition to the Jurassic franchise because it was an original concept and looked absolutely terrifying. She quickly assumed the role of the alpha dinosaur in Jurassic World, so it was obvious that Rexy was going to have a go at her. Unfortunately, old age spares no species, so our trusted Raptor Blue had to drop by for an assist. Look, I don't need to explain why this scene is so popular. The clip has over 300 million views on YouTube, so those are numbers only artists like Taylor Swift or The Weeknd can pull off. It's safe to say this encounter was the most memorable battle we've ever seen between dinosaurs, and the Mosasaurus entrance towards the end was a nice little cherry on top of the cake. Vintage stuff always sticks, doesn't it? Look, I know this movie didn't go all out with special effects, and as a matter of fact, it looks like they used miniatures to get the job done. But having said that, the fight is over 15 minutes long and maintains its intensity throughout every single second. Neither of the monsters backed down and kept trading blow after blow, it was almost as if they had unlimited HP. I was a little confused by the ending because the humans ended up destroying Destroyer with their laser blasts, but then they also shifted their focus towards Godzilla. Like, he's on your side, guys. What's with the friendly fire? The fight ends on a rather tragic note, but at least our boy reincarnates himself, so he's not really dead. Firing will. ULT lasers, fire one. <laughs> Funny that an animated kids film finds its way into my top five the stranger things have happened on the TV region. The epic battle between the Bewildered Beasts completely changed the vibe of How to Train Your Dragon sequel, and that's solely because of the massive size they present. Shout out to the animation team for making these monsters look as brutal as they did. Both Barkers and Drago's Bewildered Beasts are probably strong enough to defeat even the dragons of Game of Thrones, so just know that we're dealing with S-tier monsters right here. The fight in itself isn't too long or fancy or anything like that, but the impact it brings to the table is undeniable. Eventually, it's Drago's beast who emerges victorious, but honestly, could have gone either way. I mentioned Leatherback earlier, so it was kind of obvious that Otachi was going to show up higher on this list. Man, that monster is a whole other level. I'm actually surprised she wasn't a Category 5 Kaiju. The fight between her and Gypsy Danger had a wide variety of impressive shots, but the best one has got to be when our favourite Jaeger used a freaking ship as a baseball bat to beat the living daylights out of Otachi. I knew from that moment that this was going to be one of my top films of 2013. It's kind of funny that after all that drama, it was a simple sword that ended up defeating Otachi 
But hey, we got to see that awesome sequence of Gypsy slicing her up like a fresh salami roll. As much as I enjoy the newer rendition, it's 2005's King Kong who will always be my number one gorilla. It's hard to believe that a monster movie which runs for over three hours managed to gain such success 18 years ago, but then again, it was directed by Peter Jackson who definitely knows a thing or two about making grand films. Speaking of grand, the battle between the King Kong and the three V-Rexes was astonishingly brilliant to say the least. It's kind of difficult to understand why he'd do so much to save a human, but then again, it is Naomi Watts, so I guess it makes sense, right? Heck, if I was a giant gorilla, I'd probably do the same thing, but probably without the excessive sacrifice like at the end of this movie. This has got to be Godzilla's most dominating victory, so it comes as a surprise he was getting beaten up before his moment of truth. King Ghidorah is by no means a pushover, so to take him down in itself is a major accomplishment. The way nuclear Godzilla mercilessly obliterates him from the face of existence was a total boss move. There was absolutely nothing the three-headed dragon could do about it, and as we all saw, he tried his best too. This makes you wonder if there's anything in the world that can defeat the nuclear version of the King of Monsters. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Mechagodzilla wouldn't have stood a chance against this guy either. He'd have gotten fried before even connecting to his monster Wi-Fi. If you like this video, please subscribe to the TV region and here's another video that I